This is the ulna. This is the radius. This is the ulna. It's that little black area there. You know, you can see it actually is that same joint line that's between the meniscus, the triquetrum, and the ulna, and it extends between the radius and the ulna. This, so there's a distal radial ulnar joint. It's called the inferior radial ulnar joint. Same as same. And there's a capsule there, and there's some intrinsic and small intrinsic ligaments. And that's where the forearm bones roll over each other. They pivot over each other during pronation and supination at that articulation. We got to tech, we have to test that. It's commonly injured. It's in, you know in, in activities where there's a lot of pronation and supination, sometimes it's racket sports, um, other you know, other activities, um, falls in the outstretched hand, you jam the lunate between those two bones, traumatizes that area. We want to check that. Um, we're gonna check it with end field testing. First thing we're going to do is to see if the gl see if the gliding is there, the A to P P to A glide. And there's two positions for this. You can actually stand shoulder to shoulder and glide the bones past each other, or you can stand facing the patient and have them go into the high five position, sometimes known as the Supremes position. <laughs> Stop in the name of love. Right? That way. This position, if you go like this. That's lovely. Let your hand relax. This is the Madge position. This is named after the Palm Olive dishwashing liquid commercial, where the client's got her hand, you know, like this in the dishwashing liquid. Just like this. Imagine there's a dishwashing liquid small right there. That's the Madge position. I'm going to simply come, you know, from shoulder to shoulder. My thumbs are going to come down. I'm going to look at the bump, and I'm not going to cross the bump. I'm going to stay on this side. Let your hand relax. I'm simply going to glide one way and glide the other way. P to A and A to P glide. So it's this and it's this. It's named by the, what the radius does. So here's his radial styloid, here's his radial side, there's the bump, that's the ulna. As I go with the radius that way, that's P to A glide, spring, spring. As I go the other way, pull the radius that way, that's A to P glide, spring, spring. Okay. If I wanted to come in from the front and do this, go like this for me. Okay. Um, you know, I know I can I can see the bump over here, so I know where you know you know where it is. So now I get my fingers along, and I get my fingers along just on the opposite side, and these thumb this thumb I can see his wrist crease. I don't want to cross that. And then let your hand relax. Spring, 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 spring. And so again, A to P, P to A glide this time from standing in front. Supreme position. Either one. You should know both. And lastly, for this joint, is compression. So put your hand forward like this. Again, I'm standing here. I'm outside the arm. I see his bump. I know I don't want to cross that because I'm checking this joint line between the radius and the ulna. So I'm going to contact with a circular grip proximal to the bump here. This hand right next to it. And now, and this is the hard part. Good lordosis. Lock myself in. Spring, spring. Release. All right, all right. One more time for the slow ones in the back. What? Hand forward. Here's the bump. I go proximal to the bump. I slide my circular grip in. I take this hand, I go right next to it. I get in a good lordosis. I spring, spring, and I release. And I hit the landing. That's it. It's simply, a, it's, it's simply a compression because I'm simply oh, spring. Oh, because they're going like that. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, oh, I would never do that. I would only do this. Okay. Why are you doing coordination?